It's February 26 at noong 1986, ito ang unang araw ng exile ng napatalsik na presidente Ferdinand Marcos, ng kanyang pamilya at ng kanyang mga cronies. Bago ang lahat, hindi po kinidnap si Marcos ng CIA. Humingi ang mga Marcos ng tulong kasi lahat ng mga piloto at mga aircraft ng Air Force na kay Ramos na. Ang kinikidnap, hindi nakakapag-empake ng jewelry, pera at adult diapers. Nakisakay sila. Hindi naman sila pwede mag-taxi sa pupuntahan nila. Mula Malacanang, nilipad ang pamilyang Marcos ng helicopter ng mga Amerikano sa Clark Air Base. Nung nakapagpahinga na ng konti, Marcos talked to his aides about organizing an Ilocano army to fight its way back to Metro Manila and regain the capital. He called Minister of Local Government Jose Ronyo who counseled him against a counter-coup dahil dadana kang dugo. He called Minister of Trade and Industry Bobby Ongpin who did not support his idea of an all-out civil war. Bago mag-take off, sinigawan ni Marcos yung Amerikanong piloto na pumunta dapat yung eroplano sa lawag. Ayun, nasidate tuloy. Nang mga 5am, sinakay si Marcos nang nakastretcher sa isang C-9 Nightingale Hospital aircraft, which the Geneva Convention protects from forced landings. The Americans gave the party two aircrafts that can carry 500 people. They also had a security detail from the U.S. Marines. Papunta sila sa Anderson Air Base sa Guam. Pagdating sa Guam, nakapaglakad na si Marcos pababa ng aeroplano. Dinala muna siya sa Naval Medical Center to check his condition. He suffered from lupus and autoimmune disease. After a few hours, they landed in Hawaii. Hawaii Governor George Ariyoshi recalled that Marcos wanted to go to Lawag, but it was the Marcos family who wanted to stay together and to stay in the United States. U.S. Customs estimated the baggage from Marcos and 88 companions at $7.7 million dollars or $308 million pesos. The gems and jewelry alone were valued at $4 million dollars. In 1991, after five years, the Marcos family returned to the Philippines and returned to politics. The last five days of doing this series has been a refresher for me. I realized that many forgot what people power meant and the young were never taught it. This was a people's revolution, which took the lives of 16 people. It was not bloodless. There was an overthrow of dictatorial government in favor of a democratic one. Those who are dismissing it as an event are perhaps angry that the change did not happen. They called it a failure and minimized it. May nagtanong, o ano nang ginawa nila pagkatapos ng people power? Ang tanong dapat, ano ang ginawa natin? EDSA didn't fail, we failed. Because people did not change enough. Guns, goons, and gold are making a comeback. We vote for familiar personalities, not for qualifications or accomplishments. Sinayang natin yung pagkakataong magbago. Kasalanan natin. O ba?